All right, so with the last demo, I went nuts with softening, with softening shadows and softening highlights. And I still have these kind of clean, full bleed inking shapes. And some of them, like this one, I'm not pleased with the shape yet. So let me improve upon that. Maybe. Let's see, a nice clean way to do that is to use the pen tool, get a nice curve. To use as a selection, and then to cut out from there. I just don't like that arc. Okay, that's better. Eh, I don't know if it is better. It's tricky. I'll work with that still. Okay. I know what I'll do. I'll use the pen tool to make it a more complex curve. Kind of has its own personality. There we go. And on one half of that curve, if I turn it into a selection, on one half of that curve, I'll delete. And on the other half, I'll paint in with the black. Oh, select inverse. So now it's color troubleshooting. And then there might be places where you just want to simplify it. All right, so I overdid it a little bit with the coloring, I think. It works, but it's more like psychedelic mushrooms than water. And so what's, what's nice is that I can always play with the opacity and turn things down. So I think where I mostly overdid it was with the, uh, the coloring variations in my cut edge. I really pushed those far. So I can push those back a little bit using color balance. Take my highlights and my shadows. back to warms. And then take my highlights. There we go. Let's just tone this one down in opacity. And then with my soft edged, I was worried about my tongue. So I brought up this tongue layer. And what I'm going to do is fill it with a gradient with a dissolved filter. And with a color overlay. more subtle. And fade those. And let's bring that down through the layers. There we go. And that helps.
And then ultimately, I want to make my final decisions with a gray background because that shows me the most variety. And I might want to take the whole folder of my soft edge and tone it down a little bit. Or even play with different blending modes. Soft light and pin light are ones I, I tend to like. Or more subtle. And we can always duplicate them, these different layers, and then blend those in. So there's no, no shortage of stuff you can do to kind of work with your color until it's interesting to you. Now, all of this has happened behind our black line work. So this is what my color is doing. I'm going to take my full bleed inking and actually give it a gradient overlay everywhere. I think I'm going to set it to normal and I'm going to set its color overlay to be yeah, the darker blue. And the gradient overlay, let's set that to dissolve. I like that. So I have that kind of content in the in the darks. And then I'm going to rasterize that layer style. So that's different than just solid black. I can also then just fill in this little gap in it. Should have done that before I rasterized it because then it would fill that gap with this texture. Okay, so then how do you rasterize a layer style? You Just like you rasterize a smart layer. And now I'm gonna duplicate it just like I did with the highlights, and I'm going to blur that out. That's too much. <laughs> Remember, the filter always remembers the last setting. So I want to deal with subtlety. The blurring helps to even out and soften the edges. All right, now I can try it with the sharp edge behind it or not. But all of this is happening behind this black line work. And let's see, is there any layer style that is not already rasterized? Okay, good. Okay, so now the last special effect you can do is what's called a color hold. And a color hold is something that goes, some coloring that goes above and beyond your vector black line work. So for the lemon here, it's easy to see. We still have the black line work here, but with full spectrum color, it feels a little strange to have a solid black outline. So a color hold can replace that black outline with green or something else, and even have highlights go over the top of it. In my inspiration, this doesn't have any color holds, this doesn't have any color holds, this doesn't have any color holds, but this does have a color hold. And that might be why I like it, it looks kind of vintage. So instead of any black, the, the black ink is replaced with this kind of darker blue ink. So we have flat color, we have duotone, cut edge color, 
and we have um, basically flat color with a color hold here. So it's a very easy thing to play with. I just duplicate my um, vector layer, and then you can just use your layer style effects and try a color overlay for the color. And if it's blue, let me try maybe even stealing this one. that color. There we go. And maybe pushing it a little bit darker. And then let me try um, adding a gradient overlay underneath it. And then taking the color down a little bit so that gradient overlay comes through and then setting the angle of the light for the gradient overlay and the scale of it. Bring this up a little bit. And then there's probably going to be parts of my color hold that I'm not so happy with. So let's see what it looks like on white. So let me um, rasterize all those layer styles. And let me then play with the hue saturation and maybe saturate them a little bit more. Push it a little bit bluer. There we go. Maybe lighten them slightly. And then I can do things like dodge and burn to darken it where I want it darkened with the midtones, just like we did when we were doing compositing and working with landscapes. And I'm going to darken it you know, towards the center there and around the eyes. This is just working with the outlines, right? And then wherever I think it needs more kind of shadow on the outline, I'm just going to burn it a little bit, not too much. I'll make it feel more dimensional. And then I can do the, the same with dodge, and I can brighten it up where I feel it needs to be brighter, like maybe at the top of the letters, to kind of go with those highlights that I've already built in. And you see the dodge is kind of saturating the line work a little bit too. This is something that is easier for us to do now on the computer than it was for Jim Phillips to do in the 80s with just graphics and sign paints that were then photostatted. Right? But it doesn't always mean it's the best thing. And I can turn off any part of it, you know, and erase any part of it and just let the black lines work. And remember, I have that stroke built in too. And I'm wondering if I even want that stroke in there at all. So I might select all the pure whites and delete them from my color hold layer. And I'll usually label my color hold layer and, and mark it with them. Uh, with red. Anything that goes above, this could be little like glints on a sword. The golden yellow around flames. That will usually go above the vector line work in a color hold layer. Let's see if I got rid of all of it. I kind of like some of that interior outline. Yeah. I don't think I want to get rid of all of it. But maybe I'll erase it down a little bit. Take it down to about 60%. 65%. So this is just me playing.